using the mint sprint to predict language proficiency of Chinese and English bilingual. So uh, let me just get the term out of the way. So the mint sprint stands for the multilingual naming test. As you can see the left bottom, it's the 80 item test that the difficult level increased row by row. And uh, um, this test was developed uh, to assess bilingual language proficiency. Uh, one of the reasons is because self-rating and some tests like Boston naming tests is not really reliable because um, some items are uh, very culturally biased that cannot measure everyone's language uh, proficiency. And the mean sprint has already been uh, proven to be a reliable measure of language proficiency in Spanish and English bilingual uh, using uh, the oral proficiency interview. So the oral proficiency interview is a, a goal center in the field to measure people's language proficiency. Uh, one of the downsides is it takes a long time to do and uh, uh, also uh, it takes like a lot of resource to actually uh, administrate it. And so the study want to see um, whether this, the mint sprint can um, still be reliable in Chinese English bilingual population. So um, and they, we also want to see, can we do it faster? And the reason why we want to look at what uh, can we do it faster is because um, like in dominant language, if you uh, give participant limit, uh, unlimited amount of time, they would just uh, take time to name everything uh, correct. They are very familiar with their dominant language. So um, in this case, there will be less variance, uh, variability across individuals. So um, it, it's, it's going to be difficult to actually evaluate people's uh, language proficiency. And so in this study, we, uh, we think the time pressure that could actually uh, improve so the, the, the proficiency assessment by differentiating people's uh, performance, especially in the dominant language, as, as I just mentioned. And also the speed of production uh, could predict language, language proficiency and we're gonna calculate it uh, by using the efficiency score. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how do we calculate that later. So uh, in this study, we have 20 uh, Chinese English bilingual, we have 12 Chinese dominant and eight English dominant. And all the participants were, uh, did the oral proficiency interview with the experimenter and also they did the mint sprint. So after the first pass, they were prompt to go back to the item they were missed and named incorrectly and their total score was recorded. And uh, the efficiency score was calculated by uh, the timing minute that participant took to complete the, the task and, and divide the percentage correct. So if you think about it, the larger the score, the less proficiency, the less efficient, the, the less efficient uh, they are uh, naming each items. So um, the result shows, uh, we separate the result into non-dominant language and dominant language. So as you can see, um, both the first pass of non-dominant language and second pass can uh, successfully predict the OPI score. And uh, although um, the, the total score is a little bit better predictor, but the difference is really subtle. And uh, uh, the efficiency score shows similar pattern as you can see, um, larger uh, efficiency score indicate less uh, OPI score. And if you look at the dominant language at the right, figure two and four, the pattern is similar, but the relationship, the relationship is uh, less stronger. As you can see, the, rest, the, the red line as the first pass of the dominant language only marginally predicts language proficiency. And as figure four shows that the efficiency score is also um, the relationship of efficiency score and OPI is uh, less stronger than figure three, the non normal language. So what can we conclude from the study? So first of all, mint sprint was a reliable measure assessment for uh, language proficiency in Chinese and English bilinguals. So it, it could potentially save time and resources in both clinical and research settings. And time measure doesn't really improve or compromise the assessment of language proficiency. And the speed uh, as the efficiency score shows can accurately predict language proficiency. So um, the speed constitute a critical factor as a language proficiency. So one of the limitations of the study is it has a, a smaller sample size. So uh, only 20 participants, so uh, it's very underpowered. But the future study can definitely look at a much a bigger and diverse and also balanced bilingual sample size to see if the patterns still exist and uh, can be replicated. Okay.